Hello, UCAR. Peter Christensen here, coming to you from the CEO's desk. Going to talk about kind of contract law 101 here for a minute. So I get asked this question or this concept concept comes up every once in a while of uh, what controls if there's a difference in the MLS listing and the REPSI, the purchase contract. So let's say, for instance, that uh, the MLS listing says, hey, there's a hot tub included in the property and you go under contract for that property. Contract, the REPSI doesn't say anything about a hot tub being included. And uh, indeed, the seller has removed the hot tub. So which controls? Some people will cite to the MLS listing and say, that says there's a hot tub, there needs to be a hot tub. Uh, a confusing situation you want to avoid for sure. They should be in harmony with each other, but let's say they're not. Well, the contract is the deal. So the REPSI is the deal. The MLS listing is not a contract. It's an invitation for offers. Many things can be changed. It's the price asked for on the MLS is not a guarantee that that will be the price on the contract. Certainly the, the price in the REPSI controls. Same thing with everything else. So it's an advertisement really. Now, can there be problems if it's advertised one way on the MLS and then is not that way in the contract? Yeah, sure. It's confusing. There may be issues with uh, misrepresentation from the beginning, but you just the, the, the key point to remember is that the contract controls. So if it's mentioned in the MLS and you, and you want it to be that way, make sure the contract reflects that as well. Uh, there's also been brought up this practice of attaching or saying see the uh, MLS listing. I'm not a huge fan of that because the MLS listing can change. There are problems with, uh, there can be other inaccuracies in the MLS that don't match up to the uh, contract. Which one of those are meant to control if you put a copy of the MLS listing at the end as, as an addendum? Are you meaning that that is now the latest version of anything that's, that the MLS listing contradicts in the contract? It gets problematic because you have, there's so much information in those listings. So I don't recommend doing that, but I do recommend looking at what's important to your client, uh, your buyer in particular, seller too, and uh, making sure the contract reflects that. But really what we should do for certainty for our clients is everything should be contained in the four corners of the contract. You've heard that in real estate school, right? The four corners of the contract. It should all be there. That really should be all we need to look at to clarify what, what the deal is, what it's composed of. So make sure you're looking at that. Make sure you're, you're verifying that everything from the listing that you, your client was important to your client is reflected accurately in the contract and you should be good. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember, this is not legal advice, legal information only. If you need specific legal advice, please contact your attorney. If you like these videos, check out our library. We have more. And uh, leave us a comment if there's a topic you'd like us to hit. Thanks for tuning in.